over the years, CASE, the Centre for Analysis of Social Exclusion, has done quite a lot of work on how we measure inequality, on how we measure poverty and social disadvantage. Um, we've also recently been doing quite a lot of work on energy efficiency, on the contribution of, ha of, of heating in housing and domestic energy use to, um, to carbon emissions and so on. Now, those two things come together in a problem that's come to be known as fuel poverty. That is, people who really have great difficulty, given their incomes, in affording to keep warm and meet their other energy needs. Now, this is something that's been the subject of legislation in Britain. There's actually an Act of Parliament from the year 2000 saying that the government should, uh, within a period of, of 16 years, um, act to abolish fuel poverty so far as is reasonably practicable, it says in the legislation. Now, that of course presupposes you know how to measure fuel poverty. I was approached uh, in 2011 by the Department of Energy and Climate Change to have a look at the problem of fuel poverty to say to what extent it really was a separate problem and if so how it was best measured and whether the way, whether the, way the country has been doing it so far was the right way. Well, so far as whether fuel poverty is really a problem, it's quite clear it is from three different directions that overlap. First of all, it causes hardship. People on low incomes are paying above the odds and are paying a lot of money to keep warm when they're living in poor quality housing. Um, it's a health problem because people who can't afford to keep warm um, run much greater risk of, of health problems, ultimately contributing to Britain's high rate of excess winter deaths. It is also a problem for climate change because people on low incomes can't afford to um, to do the work, the insulation and so on, that would actually reduce their energy costs. And, and yet they would be the ones who suffer most if we use carbon prices to put up, um, to put up, uh, to put up the cost of carbon and encourage people to reduce carbon emissions. So that was clear. The next question is how you measure it. Now, we've been measuring it officially so far um, according to the idea of whether somebody would have to spend more than a tenth of their income to keep warm. Now, that sounds okay, but it has some odd effects. It means that uh, I even saw a headline um, in, in, in 2011 saying that the royal household was heading for fuel poverty because they were spending so much on energy. It didn't quite capture what the Act says constitutes fuel poverty. Um, and that, that is people with a low income who face unreasonable um, energy costs. So we looked again at this. I worked with a team at the Department for Energy and Climate Change and put forward an alternative definition, in a way a rather common sense definition, that is looking at which people um, had um, um, relatively high energy costs to keep warm, given the state of their houses, and which ones, and, and at the same time, had low incomes based on a modification of the standard UK poverty line. Um, that, that sounds straightforward, but it also had the advantage that we could then look at things like how deeply people were in fuel poverty. And, and set up a measure which we call the fuel poverty gap, which looks at, at, at how big the scale of the problem is and encourage governments to, to, to look at tackling the worst problems first, rather than just concentrating on tipping a few people over one magic line that would suddenly get them out of fuel poverty. We completed that report um, in the spring of 2012, and the government launched a consultation proposing that that kind of measure should be adopted um, later in 2012. Um, at the moment when I'm recording this we're waiting to hear the results of that but I think already this has had this work has had had one effect apart from the government proposing a change to the measure and that is that government has committed itself to producing a new strategy to tackle fuel poverty sometime early in 2013. So far we've been working on a strategy that was set up uh, back in 2001. The world has changed since then. So I hope that the work that ca has happened in case and, and we took, that took place under this um, a particular project, not only will, will contribute to changing the way that a particular social problem is measured, but it will also contribute to more being done to tackle it.